Functions and role of money. In this presentation, you will be able to define and explain what is meant by the term money and explain the different functions and roles of money. Okay, let's get started with a quick question. What is money? Pause the video now and jot down some of your ideas. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. So money is typically used and defined as a method of exchange, typically in the form of any combination of coins and banknotes. So that's what we tend to mean when we talk about the term money. And it tends to be some form of legal tender. And obviously in the UK, as in most parts of the world, again, it's coins or banknotes are formed of legal tender. What you could do for a little task now is try and write down all the different denominations that you believe are legal tender in the UK. And then go onto the internet and research and see how many of these you've got correct. So here's another quick question for you. How does managing money enable a business to be successful? Pause the video now while you think about this and write down your answers. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. So managing money should ensure that a business is receiving more money than it's spending. Or, of course, it could be yourself to ensure that yourself as a person is receiving more money than you are actually spending. This will enable you, in your case, to have more money going into yourself, your own bank account, or a business to make a profit and not to get into debt, which, of course, potentially is expensive. That's because you're charged interest on any money that you typically borrow. By receiving more than what a business spends, then it can use that money to invest and grow a business. Or if you're talking about a personal form of finances, by having more money than what you're spending, you can use that money to invest and grow your own assets. So that could be maybe to buy shares or maybe to buy a bigger house or a new car. So by having money and by speculating to accumulate, but ensuring that you always have control of your finances, you're able to invest and grow. That's the same for a person or a business. Okay, I want to just start with something which is quite interesting and something you may not be aware of. The value of currency used to be based against the amount of gold that a country has. And as you can see, there are some nice big gold bars. Now, that used to be called the gold standard. And it was actually removed in 1931 in the UK. What we tend to see now is that we don't follow what's called the gold standard. We use a different process. So, in the UK, we have the Bank of England, as you can see in that picture there. And it tends to be just the same in the modern world all over the globe. We've got a more paper-based system, or an electronic-based system, if you want to think about it, where the central banks of each country, like the Bank of England in the UK, can decide how much money they're going to print. They call that quantitative easing when they print more money. And by printing more money, they can obviously either increase or decrease the wealth that's in an economy. People clearly who have outstanding loans to a country are not happy if a country sets about printing more money because it devalues the purpose of that loan. Think about this logically. If I was to lend you a million pounds, so I'm in another country and I lend the UK a million pounds, if the Bank of England was just to run off a load of £20 notes up to the value of a million pounds and gave them to me, I wouldn't be that happy. It's got no worth and no value. And that's because you devalue your own currency. But there are reasons that you may look at in some of the other videos that I've got online, which explain why you may want to set about a policy of devaluing your currency. Now, the more money that's printed, the more the actual worth of the currency falls. And as I just explained, this is because if there's lots of money printed, then effectively the currency becomes worthless. A good extension task would be now to pause the video and go have a research of some of the exchange rates of different currencies to the pound and look how many different um, um, values you get of a foreign currency without giving any answers away. But different currencies, some of them you get millions to one pound. So you could actually be a millionaire with your one pound because their currency is effectively worthless. So you might be a millionaire in a certain country, but as a result of that, you actually really, it's totally worthless. You probably could only buy a loaf of bread for a million whatever currency, I don't know if we give too many answers away, but have a look on some exchange rates and see what it's like. Okay, now, this is quite important. There are four different functions of money that you need to understand for your exam. 
Now, money typically has these four different functions. Firstly, it's a unit of account. It's a nominal measure of currency that can be used to value cost, goods, services, assets, or liabilities, so things that you own or things you owe, or maybe an income or expenditure. It's just purely a figure. It's a unit of account. So in this, in our case, it's clearly the pound is our unit of account, but it's a measure of the value of a service, effectively, or a product. It can form the means of an exchange because it's a legal tender that's got a value for an exchange. In the modern world, of course, we've even got things like the Bitcoin becoming a, a means for an exchange. It's got a value and a purpose, according to the online world. However, it's got to have a means for an exchange to both parties. If one party doesn't value that, then it's, it's a pointless transaction. It's not going to happen. So, for example, I would not sell in Bitcoins because I don't personally have any reason to believe they have a value. Now, of course, people are going to tell me they do. All the comments below will be explaining how it works, no doubt. However, I don't understand how it works. So to me, I would not sell you something or I would not accept payment in the form of bitcoins. Well, I'd want it in pounds sterling. I may accept dollars or euros because I could convert them as long as I could obviously factor in the cost of exchange. It's also a store of value because it's an asset that you can save, you can retrieve and you can exchange it any time. So just because you give me £20 now... I can keep that £20 and I can turn it into value at a later date. Of course, what you've got to consider is this term called inflation. And I've got a video on inflation and I will cover it later as well. But you may want to search the YouTube channel to have a look at the inflation video. And what we're looking at there is that you can turn that cash into some form of value at a later date. Maybe it's not going to be worth full £20. Maybe it's only worth £19.50 with inflation. However, it's still a store of value. And last but not least, it's a legal tender. It's actually legally accepted and valued by a government or a country as a form of payment. And that's partly what makes money work. The fact that it's got those four different functions. And if you combine those together, you have a purpose for money. Okay, that's it. At the end of this short video, you should be able to define and explain what is meant by the term money and explain the different functions of money. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at BBusinessB. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below. And remember to check out the website, bbusinessb.co.uk, where you can find a full collection of resources. Until next time, keep... Thanks for checking out the Be Business B YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at B Business B. Also, give the Facebook page a like. It's facebook.com forward slash B Business B. And lastly, don't forget to check out the online hiver activities found on bbusinessb.co.uk full of quizzes, activities, and resources. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing.